a five seed. But for Drexel, they've got some low post play with a guy they call the Baby Shaq. Well, Drexel has to score inside. It's going to be very important. Malik Rose is their guy. 20 and a half points a game, 13 rebounds. He's got to score down on the block. Lorenzen White from Memphis is another key player in this game. At 6'11", this guy can take the ball outside. He can score. He can rebound. He also blocks over two shots a game. Our lineups for this afternoon's game, Chuck Guitar, Jeff Myers joining with Rose, Cornelius Overby and Mike Darakis will be in the backcourt. For Memphis, Michael Wilson and Cedric Henderson are the bookends with, with Lorenzen right in the middle. Mingo Johnson, they like to get him involved early, and Chris Garner operating at the point. Drexel coach Bill Harrion now in his fifth year, tutored in this game under Mike Jarvis as an assistant at Boston University, and then knocked off BU in the North Atlantic Conference Championship game to make it here to the NCAA tournament. And Larry Finch played on that 73 team that lost to UCLA, an All-American guard. He's a lifer in Memphis and now a head coach after 10 years. Our veteran crew is anchored by Larry Rose this afternoon, Donnie Gray, and Rick Wolko. A number five seed has been eliminated in the first round the past seven years. Memphis a part of that being knocked off by Joey Myers, 12th seed of DePaul team in 89. Opening tip is control of the Memphis with Garner running the show. Memphis is wearing gray for the first time since the mid-80s. Wins on the right, trying to break in the new uni early. Can't get it to fall, and Drexel will have it. Tigers are such a gifted athletic team. Everybody, all they think about is the fact that they run and they dunk and they slam. But defensively, they've done a great job this season holding their opponents around 40% from the field, but only 28% behind the three-point arc. Very good defending the perimeter. This entire offense runs right through Malik Rose. They love to get him as many touches as possible out of their half-court set. And the shot clock already under 10. Myers, long rebound to Overby. Right to the touch. Malik Rose, 2-0 Dragons. Good offensive rebound by Overby to be able to get control of the ball and then attack. Don't be afraid. Take the ball back out. Attack. Take a defender and dish it off. Lorenzo and Wright comes outside and Cedric Henderson knocks that one through. Well, you take Wright away from the basket and that allows Henderson an opportunity to get a quality look. At six foot seven, Cedric Henderson is a guy who has a chance to play at that next level. He's a junior. Last five games, he's been over 20 points a game outside and inside game. Myers. There's that vertical leaping ability of Michael Wilson. Boy, he can get right up there. Garner, jump stop. Taken down by Guitar. Overby has his pocket pick. Great save. Nice hustle. And on the other end, Henderson finishes. He is everywhere to open this game. The Tigers are doing a tremendous job defensively. Once they get control of the ball, they're going to score in transition. They're going to put it up on the glass and send two or three players after it. As usual, this University of Memphis team, Memphis-based. It's an outstanding city for high school talent. Has been for 20 years. Mingo Johnson, no stutter, stop and go. Not there, and a foul underneath. That will go against Chuck Guitar, his first. Well, this is the defense of the Tigers. Just great hustle, nice hands for Cedric Henderson to be able to tip the ball, keep it in play, and then come down and be a part of the break. He fills the lane, catches the ball, and finishes. That's great hustle, good athletic ability on both ends of the floor. Cedric's done everything but sell popcorn in the early moments. He'll trigger this inbounds pass. Johnson. Right lost it. That was a tough pass. Leads to a turnover. Drexel gets it back. Eastern Michigan a winner today over Duke. The Eagles knocking out the Blue Devils. Early on, Memphis off made baskets they can set up their pressure defense that makes a big difference in their defense doesn't it, it certainly does and in possession anytime there's a stop of a possession on the full court they will try to press it guitar an outstanding three-point shooter hits at a 36 percent clip 
on the season. He ties the game at five. At 6'9", he is not bashful about stepping away from the basket. The Drexel Dragons 26-3 coming in here. Wilson, the turnaround. The bank is open in the mountain time zone. 7-5, <laughs> Michael Wilson with his first two. They call him Sky for obvious reasons. Well, for those that haven't seen Michael Wilson, uh, when you see him, it's almost comical to watch him jump in the air. He has about a 46, anywhere from 46 to 51 inch vertical leap, depending on how he takes off on one leg or two. Johnson, Mingo can't hit, pulled down by Malik Rose. Numbers for Drexel. That's almost fool's gold because Memphis gets the tempo control they want. He was thinking about an alley-oop, but miscommunication between he and Lorenz and Wright. Garner with the turnover. Mike Duracus, no miscommunication in his intent. Tied at seven. I tell you what I'm noticing, Tim. The Tigers are fatigued because of the altitude here. I'm looking at Michael Wilson. He's sucking some air. So is Cindric Henderson. Wilson doesn't stop his elevation, though, does <laughs> Not at all. He only rose up above the, the, the altitude there. He's asking for an out. Caracas off the front iron, pulled down by Wilson. Garner, a long-standing line of small point guards in Memphis history. You think about Elliot Perry, Andre Turner, the little general going back to the mid-80s. Garner fits right in with the history of the Memphis program. Well, Anthony Hardaway's got to be in there somewhere. Uh, he was more of a lead guard. <laughs> Anthony's in his own category. <laughs> they can drop dimes in Memphis. But when you're looking for the perimeter game, look no further. He will derock you. you down. Make it a Bud Light. Did you reserve the car with Hertz? Not exactly, but it's a good deal. Are they as fast as Hertz? Not exactly, but what's the rush? We're on vacation! <laughs> Dad, are we lost? Hertz gives you computerized directions. Honey, this is not exactly Hertz, okay? Well, I hope they have the same emergency road service as Hertz. Not exactly. In Rent-A-Car, there's Hertz, and there's not exactly. Make sure you choose the right one. Are you sure this is the way to the hotel? Not exactly. Did you hear that? I can't believe this has happened to me. I mean, I, the, the car the tires are gone and the battery, the battery's Everybody gone. Everybody goes for bad times. And you can see them change if you calm them down. Or you explain it to them when maybe they were feeling in a position of powerlessness. Robert, could you call a cab? That's a great feeling. When something happens to somebody else, I want to give them back. Thank you so much. I think that's what this is all about, really. Being in good hands is the only place to be. The sophisticated material that's used to make the cockpit canopy of the F-16 fighter shatter-resistant is the same material we use to make the headlamp covers on the Aurora. So you can imagine how advanced the rest of the car is. Aurora by Oldsmobile. It's your money. Where you get your news and who you get it from. One of the most important decisions you make every day. For straight talk and hard facts, turn to the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Sounds like a cliche from sportscaster when we say he's out to get a blow, but that's exactly what Michael Wilson is trying to do. He's trying to find some oxygen over there on the sideline. He was asking for an out. He took a jump shot, and on the way back down the court, he said, Coach, I need a break. Drexel out of the half-court set, always looking to find Malik Rose. This time he sets the pick. 
three-point shot from Guitar, not there. Lorenzo right, the rebound. Well, Bill Herrian told us yesterday that he, he knows his team is going to hustle on defense. They're going to play aggressive. They're going to be scrappy. They're going to rebound the ball. But the key for them is putting the ball in the basket. I love to right. Tough to do to get past Malik Rose's girth, and that was why the ball was turned over. Herrian coming over, as we mentioned, after leaving Mike Jarvis at GW as an assistant coach. He really believes... You know, these teams, his clubs have been here before, and they've been embarrassed. He said, hey, guys, let's go in here, play with some confidence, and not lose by 20. It's time for us to get it done. We won 26 games this year, and that confidence, obvious in Malik Rose's game, and we're tied at nine. Well, this is their third straight NCAA appearance, and they came in with a 12th seed this year, a 13th the year before, and a 14th the year before that. And they should be in here with an awful lot of confidence foul going against Cedric Henderson. When you talk of records and the confidence that comes from them, UMass, Texas Tech, UConn, Kentucky. Now, UMass a winner earlier today, as was Kentucky. UConn, many believe, has a, an easy road to the Final Four, if you can believe that. Certainly among the top seeds, they may indeed have that. Drexel coming in at 26-3. and three. Mm. That's some tall company to be included within. It certainly is, and they're coming in with the confidence you were just talking about, having won 14 in a row, 22 out of their last 23 games. John Gales has come into the game. Rodney Newsom on the floor. Memphis will play eight to nine players in a game, but some of these players are getting in a little sooner than they might have expected. Well, that's going to happen, and they have to be productive while they're out there. Rose. Well, when the offense breaks down, get it to the league. He's a collective band-aid. If he puts it on the rim, then Guitar can go get it, as he did there. Well, he was the uh, North Atlantic Conference Player of the Year this season. And if he's able to get the ball in his hands, the defense will respect him, and you'll see he'll have two or three guys around him. Jeff holding Jay Myers gets the roll. Junior out of Philadelphia, South Philadelphia High School. A tremendous defensive player along the perimeter. And this is the kind of team that Memphis fears. Uh, Marquette is a team that they had difficulty in matching up with. And Larry Finch felt that Bill Harrion would try to play him that way today. Gales hits the tray. Drexel by two, 14 to 12. Drexel still wants to try to utilize their captains, utilize the experience of Malik Rose and Jeff Myers. They're the co-captains on this Drexel team. Give them the ball, let them operate, and then force the defense to react. Rose. Oh, that's soft and sweet on the baseline for Malik. No, he's, he's certainly not bashful. The last, last year against Oklahoma State in the NCAA tournament, he had 17 points and 18 rebounds against Big Country. So he's familiar with this. He just wants to get his teammates to jump on his back and become a factor. There's the dump down to right. Newsom with the follow. Rodney Newsom, senior out of Memphis's Hamilton High School, has been injury prone through his career. They bring him in to ignite the offense. Larry Rose, Larry Finch told us yesterday that Rodney Newsom has sprained both of his big toes, which obviously is going to affect your balance. Cornelius Overby picking up that foul. Malik Rose, number double zero. When he's got the ball down on the block, he can score a variety of ways, left hand, right hand, but he uses his body well. They list him at 250 pounds and at six foot seven, he takes up a lot of space around the basket. Uh, we touched on, they call him the shack of the knack, but truthfully, <laughs> truthfully, when you damn, look at him, damn. no, I know, I know, <laughs> everyone wants to be shack, but truthfully, there's a lot of Corne uh, Corliss Williamson's game, yes, a, a part of Malik's style, wouldn't you say? No, definitely, because he has great hands around the basket, he's a pretty good rebounder, not great, but he also has the ability to be able to score on much taller defenders inside. Went to the same high school that produced Will Chamberlain. Gales down the tray. Well, John Gales heard from in a hurry. He has six, a pair of three-pointers. And it's a one-point lead for Memphis. And Gales has been struggling from the perimeter throughout the season. Only 22% from behind the arc. He's a Division II transfer. Came over from New Haven. 
really helped the balance of this Drexel team. His size allows Malik Rose a little more room. Well, it opens up the floor if he makes some of those outside shots. Newsom gets hammered underneath. Malik Rose picking up that personal. Continue to move the ball down inside. Newsom gets the ball stripped from the backside, but he got a hand on the body, which is going to send him to the basket. Memphis likes to spread the floor out on offense, maybe get a pass inside on the bounce, or even a high lob up top to Michael Wilson or even Cedric Henderson. Yeah, the foul did go to Myers on that reach in. Rose had body, but Myers got the personal. things that the Memphis Tigers do, the one thing they do not do very well is shoot free throws. Just under 62% as a team. On the deck, Myers is tied up. The possession arrow to Drexel. So the Dragons will retain possession when we come back. 10.46 remaining. Pretty entertaining. In shopping for a luxury performance sedan, Jay Kerness tested the Oldsmobile LSS against the fastest, most nimble machine on earth. Juma, the Cheetah. The LSS's sport suspension and traction control attacked the course, as did the Cheetah. But while he considered the LSS's precise handling quite impressive, there was one thing he failed to consider. Cheetahs are very sore losers. Will the LSS pass your test? Nice, kitty. Go away. When a couple from New Jersey had problems adopting a baby from Guatemala, AT&T Language Line Associates did all the interpreting. When the blizzard of 96 blanketed the Northeast, AT&T operators worked through without relief. And when an American traveling overseas found her calling card number had been stolen, an AT&T fraud protection specialist approved her call home on the spot. People stopping at nothing to make sure your world has no limits. That's your true choice, AT&T. Primitive investors were always stalking the bull, fearing the bear, chasing the fast buck. Slowly, some investors came to understand seasons and cycles. They worked to build wealth and preserve it, to thrive when others fought to survive. Are you counting on making a killing? Or have you evolved into a more civilized investor? Ask your financial advisor about Kemper Funds to start building tomorrow's today. When your car's brakes need repair, simply replacing a part makes no more sense than tuning one key on a piano. To achieve harmony, you've got to consider how the whole system works together. Thanks, Jack. Mm. The experts at Midas do. They begin every brake job with a 45-point inspection of the entire system. And because they're so thorough, you're assured of a job done right. And that's music to the ears. Midas Auto Systems experts, what can we do for you today? Years of practice, dedication, sacrifice. We should do it for days. Lead an athlete to one place. Right here. The Late Show. Only the best play on Dave's court. Syracuse. Feeling cool and easy <laughs> after that win over Montana State by 33. And of course, they get the winner of this game. And Larry Finch would love to be in that matchup on Saturday. It would be a classic, but right now, a tough take against Drexel. Guitar turns it over. Larry Finch was an assistant coach to Dana Kirk mm. when Memphis last made it to the Final Four in 1985 in Lexington. And, of course, teamed with Larry Keenan on that team in 73, ran into the big redhead <laughs> at UCLA. Larry was a heck of a player in college. Shooter, scorer. And smaller. And small. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. But he had his jersey retired, and hopefully we'll get to see his son come in, who is actually wearing his jersey for the Tigers. Jay Myers. 22 to 18. Dragons by four. Almost halfway through the opening half. Johnson on the move, using the glass. Strong shot by Mingo Johnson, and he's a player that Larry Finch told us yesterday he needs to let the offense come to him. When he starts to force it, it really takes the Tigers out of sync. Neither team bashful about throwing up threes, as illustrated. We've already had seven of them today converted. Malik Rose off 
with the penetration. And did he get hammered? That was not a cheap foul from James Newman. But this is good penetration. You give a ball fake, and Cornelius Overby is going to put the ball on the floor and take two defenders with him. In doing so, you got to be ready for that play. And Rose was ready for it, caught the ball, and he's trying to power it up strong. Well, he caught Newsom and Newman that time. Newsom getting credit for the personal is first. I think Bill Harrion said it best, when your best player is your hardest worker, then a lot will be accomplished on the court. Mm -hmm. And that is what Malik Rose is. He's also a very talented musician. He plays the tuba in the school jazz band. Never heard of jazz tuba before. Tell you what, he's got his own percussion section working in the first half. 24-20, <laughs> Drexel by, by four. Drexel normally a very aggressive man-to-man -man defense. They've actually made an adjustment going to a zone, trying to force Memphis to shoot the ball outside. Right. Where well, you want him for that reason. I mean, if he misses, chances are he can get the rebound, as he did there. And it's 24-22. Right, averages about 10 rebounds a game, and because of his 6-foot, 11-inch frame, he can tip the ball to himself. Myers. Wright collects the board. Boy, Myers wreaking havoc once the ball hits the deck. His arms are everywhere. Offense. Well, you've seen this game a time or two. <laughs> well, you also watch the hand. When you bring the ball up the court, you're permitted a certain amount of space. But Chris Garner, watch his right hand. He's bringing it up left-handed, and there's a push off there. A lot of people consider him one of the quickest players in the game. But if you got a defender in your face, you can't get him out of your way that way. That was a quality flop by Jay Myers. <laughs> <laughs> what are you I saying? Mean, people holding cards up underneath <laughs> the basket? <they're> <laughs> He is quick. Chris Garner is, is one of the quickest players in the game, but I tell you, Allen Iverson is the quickest basketball player I've ever seen play the game. I don't think you'd get any argument from anyone where that's concerned. There's the dump down to Malik. That's his game. And the entry pass, so important. You have to be able to find the seam. You space the floor, somebody cut inside, and that was a good job by Rose because he caught it and kept the ball up high. Neesler is on the floor, joined by Overby. The shot won't fall for Garner. Pace of the game has been quick throughout. Cornelius Overby. Last touch by Brahim Riley. He is able to save it and get it back out to Jay Myers. Overby. Boy, fouled him beyond the arc. That'll be three at the stretch. Not a very smart decision by Michael Wilson. Trying to go out and defend the shot. He's a good defender, but you don't want to try to block a jump shooter. Take a look in the left-hand corner of the screen. As you see Michael Wilson going out, he catches the body, and he's going to send Overby to the line. The road to the Final Four continues with CBS Sports exclusive coverage of NCAA Basketball's championship. With more afternoon games to follow, and tonight, a first-round doubleheader. Check your local listings for the games in your area. And good ones at that. You see the tip times. Arkansas-Penn State is a game that, uh, mm. when you talk about uh, he who can get the tempo they want, uh, Kareem Reed will be a player that Penn State will, will have to handle in order to get that W. Right now, Drexel doing the job. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. As we returned to camp, we were surprised to find a family of vervet monkeys who had evidently found a new plaything. The vervets had figured out how to open the sunroof, adjust the air conditioning, and even turn on the stereo. 
The Vervet's intelligence, however, was ultimately called into question as our Beethoven and Rachmaninoff CDs were left untouched. The preceding has been brought to you by the all-new Nissan Pathfinder. Now with even more amenities for you to play with. Introducing the Michelin X1 with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty. It gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus control in any driving condition. After all, it hasn't rained that much in years. Totally wimpy. Whoa. Shaken, not stirred. Nothing's more intense than slamming a dude. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. West Region first round matchup. Drexel with a six point lead over Memphis along with Derek Dickey. Tim Rando, Syracuse already a winner today. Drexel giving every indication they intend to hang. Well, they're doing a great job of rebounding defensively. That's what they have to do to stay in the game, but they also need to score. Make the outside shots. It opens it up inside for Malik Rose. Lorenzen Wright into the paint. His second bucket, four on the afternoon. 28 to 24. In comes the pressure. Handled nicely, and Duracus decided to pull it back out. Overby. Malik Rose lost out of bounds. He thought he had been deflected, but it goes back to Memphis. If you look at the, the tournament summary, Duke's first round loss since 1955. How about that? And, uh, How about that? Number one seeds coming through early, advancing by a, a very large margin, as was the case for fourth seeded Syracuse here earlier today against Montana State. Well, Duke struggles if they don't shoot the ball well from the perimeter, and Chris Collins is a factor there. He missed uh, at least one ACC game today in the tournament. Oh, yeah. Right, right past Malik Rose. 28-26 just a strong move inside for Memphis. They want to get the ball down low, and Larry Finch wants them to try to utilize that inside game first and try to score and establish that, that they can score on the block. Rose. Right back at you. Ooh. Many times you see point guards do that to one another, but in the low post, those opportunities are a little fewer and far between. No question about it, but you want to try to take advantage and go to your strength until the defense stops you. Keep getting the ball inside. Michael Wilson, that's a tough shot, but because of his athletic prowess, he's able to make it a little easier. Oh, he can make it so much easier. He just simply just jumps over a defender. Early in the season at their midnight madness, they had a basket set up at 11 foot 7 inches. He attempted a dunk. He missed it, but before that, he was able to jump up and put both hands inside the room. Jay Morris. Jay Myers just keeps on shooting. He keeps shooting, and finally they're going to go down. He has three three-pointers. The Dragons are looking for the outside shot, and they're not bashful about it. If they make it, it's going to make this a very interesting first-half finish. Ian Guitar taking those shots, and you see both of them above 50%. Tapped out by Henderson. Lines up in Lorenzo Wright's hands, and into the cup. This Lorenzen White at 230, but he's showing an awful lot of strength in his upper body to be able to muscle that ball in the basket. Hard move to the hoop. 
and Overby hits the deck. Well, Lorenzen Wright is a player who we always talk about as a gifted athlete, but a nice pick and roll. He sets a pick and then rolls to the basket and catches the ball without putting it on the floor and taking it straight up strong to the hoop. How about this finishing inside? Another powerful move for a guy 6'11", 230 pounds, showing some good strength in his upper body and still able to focus and put it in. There's still plenty of room on that body for weight gain, too. Well, I think strength. People talk about putting pounds on, but a big guy, a basketball player, they need strength, not necessarily muscle. My tire gets that one to fall. Not like us, Timmy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well said. Five minutes remaining in the opening half. Five-point cushion for Drexel. Gales. That was deflected by Guitar. Good hustle. Arrow is to Memphis. They will retain possession. Drexel is not afraid to get in there and bang and dive on the floor and come up with these loose balls. Shot clock will be at 14 for Bill Harrion's team. Well, you talk about a gym rat. He is that. <laughs> he is one of those guys that loves the game, wants to talk the game constantly. In the championship game of the North Atlantic Conference, Mike Jarvis had to play a game in the Atlantic 10, still managed to see the last 10 minutes of his game <laughs> against the team that he used to coach, BU. Johnson, not there. Long rebound to Cornelius Overby. Overback, no, very good call, close. Good call. Boy, that was a nice move by Rose to keep from the over and back. <laughs> That pass from Overby getting away from Malik Rose. The, the kind of turnovers that we're seeing from Drexel are the ones that Bill Harrion can live with. Yeah, I think so, because they're hustle turnovers. And as long as you're continuing to try to make something happen instead of being tentative and backing off. Off the ball. The wins and right. And Guitar tying up. It's Guitar picking up the foul, his second. It's amazing that Drexel doesn't get the respect around the country, especially being in, in the Philadelphia area, living in the shadow of the Big Five, and everybody knows about Pan and LaSalle and Duquesne and Temple and Villanova, but Drexel has put together some tremendous seasons. David Fry coming into the game, number 23 for Drexel. In the gold and blue. Fry's joined by Caracas, Jay Myers, obviously Rose, and Cornelius Overby. Memphis has Bills, right? Mingo Johnson, Cedric Henderson, and Michael Wilson on the floor. The last four seasons, Drexel has averaged 22 plus wins a year. Rose, that's just a great move. He sees nothing and gives it up to Duracus. You have to love it. Inside, outside game. You make a move down on the block. Try to get inside. If nothing's there, you pitch it back out. But you make that outside shot. Now it opens up the floor. Six of 12 from downtown for the Dragons. Again, the hustle. And numbers. Myers hits the deck. And he is spread eagle. You will earn it the hard way. Yes, you will. It was a hard foul, a clean foul, but you have to like the hustle of the Dragons. They're doing a great job at getting to the loose balls first. The ball's going to be loose. The Tigers are throwing the ball away, not taking very good care of it. You see Duroc is coming up with it and pitching it ahead. Jeff Myers is coming up, and he makes a hard fall right there, but you have to like the way that they're getting after this ball. They're taking it right to the Tigers. You're right, it was a hard foul by Gales, but legitimate. Yes. Myers, the slasher, transferred from St. Francis of New York into South Philadelphia. He actually wanted to play with his brother, Lewis, at St. Francis. Got one year in with him, and then after he graduated and the eligibility was used up, he was a little homesick <laughs> out of South Philly and moved back to Philadelphia to play for Drexel. He is a scorer. He's almost 19 points a game, and he's a, normally a pretty good free throw shooter, just over 72%. We saw Newman checking back into the game, 15 for Memphis in the gray uniform. He's working down low. 
Lindo Johnson, an air ball. Out of bounds. It will be controlled to Memphis. Speaking of the percussion section, <laughs> Drexel by eight. Introducing the new full-time four-wheel drive, Lexus LX450. It's everything a Lexus is, and everything a Lexus isn't. 23 seconds left. The winner moves on, the loser goes and Here they come. They bring the ball to the top of the key. Here's a swing pass, but it's stolen. Footlocker's got the Nike Air Speed Force. Left to go. The shoe worn by the top teams in March. Inbounds pass, the half court. The Dutch pass is caught. Dribble penetration down the lane. They're gonna have to and hurry. all those willing to take someone to school. Footlocker, where it all begins. Mike Klein's been my State Farm agent for nine years. And he's been a coach in the community for three. He's as dedicated to those kids as he is to his policyholders. The most important thing that I can do right now in my life is to protect my family in the future. The way he handles my life insurance shows it's important to him too. My other friends who have State Farm life insurance say the same thing about their agents. You know, I think there is something to this good neighbor business. State Farm is there. Is that Johnson's team behind us? Exactly. Are they members of Hertz Number One Club Gold? Exactly. Are we members of Hertz number not, one? Not, not exactly. So thanks to Hertz, they're going to get to the meeting on time. And we'll be late. So exactly what will I tell the boss? Hmm? In rent a car, there's Hertz. And there's not exactly. Make sure you choose the right one. And then a dog in the cargo hold ate our presentation. <laughs> is he buying it? <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> Don Johnson is a cop, Master King. Speeding to CBS. With insurance premiums up the wazoo. Nash Bridges premieres March 29th. Drexel Dragons have the second longest winning streak in the country coming into today's West Regional first round matchup with fifth seeded Memphis. And they have given every indication that they plan on keeping that streak alive. They lead by eight. And look at that, the front court scoring clearly with Drexel. And Memphis turns it over with a foul off the ball. Committed by Newman. James Newman, the junior from Cincinnati. Going to shoot a couple of free throws here, but I am so impressed with what Drexel is doing defensively and quietly. They're shutting down the Memphis guards. Mingo Johnson and Garner combined. They're only one for eight from the field. 18 fouls committed by the Tigers. Only three for Drexel in a kind of game that you'd expect Drexel to be picking up more fouls. Well, because of the athleticism of the, of the Memphis Tigers, but Drexel is not backing down. They are attacking. Instead of playing passive and backing off, they are being very, very aggressive here in the first half. Let's see if they can continue it through the second. Myers doesn't get the roll. Rodney Newsom on the floor, gets it inside to Lorenzen Wright. And he throws, there's that power. He goes on the inline. He, he felt that he had called timeout prior to stepping on the inline, but he had. This is good hustle on the defensive boards. You see the shot being missed by Wright, but nice hustle, nice hustle by Rose. He tried to call the timeout. The official said he stepped on the line. Mingo Johnson is a player that's sort of a roller coaster ride for Memphis. If he plays well, Memphis has a tendency of, of getting a lead early and controlling the pace of the game. And Mingo has been a non-factor in the last 10 minutes. Yes, he has. Mingo has struggled significantly later, later here in the year. He started off the season very well, but the last five games, he's shooting only 26% from the field because he's forcing shots. Overby picked up that foul, his first. 2.05 to play and a fresh 35-second shot clock for Memphis to work with. 
Varner, well, they're really sloughing off on him. He's got to look to take the shot. Even if he doesn't make it because of the inside rebounding that the Tigers have, they can put the ball on the board. That's the reason they were sloughing off. And Rose, when he brings it down, it is with an exclamation point. His teammates nickname him the horse, and they do that for a reason, because he works. He works on both ends of the floor. Spreading the floor. Myers using some shot clock. Shorten the game just a bit as we head for the intermission. Drexel just spreading the floor, trying to utilize some clock down under five. And Rose, a near tip in, and that would have been a highlight reel tip to be sure. <laughs> that wasn't easy. No, it was not easy just to keep the ball up there. Right. Comes out high. Loose ball. Rose collects it. Numbers now. Two on one. Over me. Missed the chippy. Newsom with the quick outlet, Domingo Johnson. They can get two for one here. They get a good look. Newman. The iron unkind to Newman in Memphis. Coming up at halftime on our Pennzoil at the half, Pat O'Brien and Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news, highlights, and more, all on Pennzoil at the half. Timeout, Drexel. 26.4 remaining and an opportunity to take the final shot. It is a 20. Look at the brackets here in Albuquerque. There are those pundits around the country that would tell you that this is the region where perhaps a top seed will have more difficulty in emerging. Clemson and Georgia coming up later tonight, and Purdue will take on Western Carolina. But I, I foresee a Saturday matchup that could have two outstanding games, regardless of who wins. Oh, I don't, it doesn't matter because Drexel is doing a great job here against Syracuse on Saturday. I think that could be a great game either way, whoever comes out with this victory here. But still, Purdue is the enigma. Everybody's wondering if it's Purdue really for real. They only have one player on their team averaging in double-figure scoring. Twenty-six point four on the game clock, twenty-three on the shot clock for Drexel as they trigger it in. Memphis has gone scoreless in the last five minutes, shooting forty-two percent on the game. Oh, sweet move, and they surprised him by going to David Fry. The junior out of Kansas City, Missouri. And it's a 10-point Drexel lead. Garner. We are at the half. Some may be surprised, but Bill Harriet isn't. It's 40-30 to 30 Drexel. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA tournament will continue after this message. And a word from your local station. Inside, every person who needs a minivan is someone who swore they'd never buy one. For that someone, Honda created Odyssey. With four doors and a fold-away third seat, it's the minivan for people who deep down inside aren't minivan people. Odyssey, the Honda of minivans. Catch CBS in cyberspace on the road to the Final Four. Take the challenge. Go behind the scenes. Jump online with CBS. This is CBS. Before you buy that new Ford Explorer, let's compare it to this Chevy Blazer. Come with me. You'll find Blazer offers the largest displacement V6 in any truck, standard. And right now, a special factory offer means you could drive a new Blazer for only $299 a month. That's right, lease a 96 Blazer with four-wheel drive, four doors, air conditioning, stereo, and more, all for just $299 a month. What are you waiting for? See your Chevy Geo dealers today. Once you thought eight tracks were the ultimate in car sound. Now, you know better. 
today's WMMR. You've grown up. We've grown up. <laughs> Far out. Happening. Once you thought these words were, well, groovy. Now you know better. Today's WMMR. You've grown up. We've grown up. I'm a good driver, but I never know what the other person is going to do. That's why I drive a Ford Windstar. It just received a five-star rating in a recent government test. That's better than Chrysler minivans. I'm not as nervous about driving, as long as there's a Windstar between me and everything else out there. Your Ford dealers, the with a thousand cash back, Windstar is seventeen sixty less than Chrysler, or get four eight financing. This is KYW TV, Philadelphia. Now, coverage you can count on. This is KYW News Three at six. Hello, everybody. I'm Stephanie Stahl, and I'm Larry Kane, and welcome to our halftime newscast. And by the way, Drexel fans, stand by. We're going live to the Drexel campus for your reaction. First, our top story tonight. Day two of the nightmare on Interstate 95. The shutdown of a big chunk of that busy highway is causing continuing problems, even as crews make emergency repairs to the fire damage. Here's a report from News 3's Beverly Williams, who's on the scene. The nuts and bolts of repairing the damaged section of I-95 began today. More heavy equipment, like this steel scaffolding, arrived. Beneath the highway, to prepare for a temporary foundation, crews removed tons of dirt and tires. Wednesday's 8 alarm tremendous tire burn crackled concrete, sizzled steel beams, and scorched about a two-block stretch of the highway between Tioga and Schiller. We're doing everything we can to open it up as soon as possible. Sometime tonight, crews will start building the temporary foundation. It'll consist of a layer of stone, steel mats, and steel towers to support the huge beams that will hold up the highway while the repair work is underway. Once the stone is put in, tomorrow we'll start to erect the towers. We're pre-assembling all the towers and we'll start erecting those tomorrow. Around the perimeter of the work area, a makeshift dam erected to contain gallons and gallons of runoff from the water still hitting the smoldering fire's hot spots. The crews expect to be here working in 12-hour shifts until they get this job done. And right now behind me, you can see that there are still many trucks and bulldozers here, and the work is coming along quite quickly, but there still is no change in the deadline, which is sometime early next week. One other note, Larry and Steph, ATF investigators are on this job, and they tell me that they do intend to make an arrest in this arson fire soon. This is Beverly Williams reporting live from Port Richmond. Okay, thank you, Beverly. Well, four suspects now face criminal charges for illegally dumping tires and creating hazardous conditions at the Port Richmond site that became an inferno early yesterday. News 3's Walt Hunter reports. A police car guards the business that officers say Daniel Carr operated in Quakertown, waiting for detectives to arrive with search warrants. The sign says tires at automotive specialists, but police claim he's been illegally dumping thousands of tires at the Fort Richmond fire site. District Attorney Lynn Abraham says it's not the first time cars face charges of environmental wrongdoing. Check into his track record uh, in Quakertown where he was already in contempt of court for failing to remove tires. The DA says Carr is one of four suspects arrested by Philadelphia police and charged with environmental crimes along with risking a catastrophe at the site. We have multi-million dollars worth of damage and we have the other environmental aspects all because somebody is purportedly unwilling to remove his tires. Meanwhile, in a separate hearing in Philadelphia, brothers Joseph and Harry Tomzak, who ran a tire business at the fire site, faced charges of threatening to break the legs and jaw of a police lieutenant who was doing surveillance at the location. These two individuals told him, we don't want you around our neighborhood, we don't want you watching our place, and they decided to teach him a lesson. Both Tomzaks were held for trial. Neither had any comment. You feel some responsibility for what happened under 95? I have nothing to say. Walt Hunter, News 3. So far, no one is charged with setting the fire, although the four suspects charged with environmental crimes have been questioned by both police and federal agents. 
And stay with News 3 for complete coverage of the I-95 story. We will have the very latest tonight after the basketball game. Also, News 3 this morning will begin early tomorrow at 5 a.m. to help you with you, your morning commute. And don't forget, you can always get continuous updates on KYW News Radio 1060. We have great news tonight about the progress of a two-year-old boy who was allegedly shot by his father with a hunting rifle. As this hospital video shows, a month to the day after being shot, Isidine Burgos is in good condition. His left arm was amputated as a result of the shooting. No word yet on when he'll be released, though, from St. Christopher's Hospital. It's great to see him. Don't go away. Sports is next. Will NBA star Mahmoud Abul Raouf change his mind and stand for the national anthem? We will tell you the latest development. Also, Dick Sheeran is live with the Dragon fans out at Drexel. We'll get the story next on News 3. He said he wants more control. Oh boy. Told me he's looking for faster response and more security. And he's leaving the firm? No. He's getting a Cadillac DeVille. Now DeVille is better than ever because now it has the North Star system. And now you can lease a DeVille for just $4.69 a month with $26.75 down. Nothing else feels like DeVille from Cadillac. See your Cadillac dealer today. You ever see a cartoon character's eyes go boing? Well, let me tell you, come to a suit event at the basement. Your eyes are going to go boing. The bargains are just unbelievable at the men's $149 or two for $250 suit event this Friday. No matter what style you're looking for, you'll find it at the basement. You won't find this quality or selection at this price anywhere else. The basement's $149 suit event this Friday at 8 a.m. It gives department stores a big cartoony black eye. If you have cancer, you're facing the most important decision of your life, where to turn for treatment. What a relief it is to know that a University of Pennsylvania Cancer Network Hospital is nearby. The network is your link to the latest treatments and research of one of America's leading cancer centers. If you have cancer, make the right decision. The University of Pennsylvania Cancer Network. Call 1-800-383-UPCC today. I just started my own company, so I lease a new Volkswagen Passat. $2.59 a month, it's the best deal around. I'm marketing an electronic toll collecting device, so you'll never have to stop to pay for a toll again. Good news for drivers. Passat's a true German road car. Track correcting rear suspension, rack and pinion steering, and oh yeah, four-wheel disc brakes. But hopefully you won't be using them to stop the toll booths anymore. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Many of you are watching Drexel take on Memphis as they try to make it to the big dance. And one group of fans has a special interest in this game. We can guess who, Drexel students. News 3's Dick Sheeran is standing by live right now at Drexel with fans who hope the Dragons can hold on to their lead. Hey, Dick. It's definitely got 400 crazed Drexel students here in the student center. They are cheering every score by their team. And I tell you, this crowd has gone wild every single time Drexel scored. We want to get a little read. Stefan, what do you think? Drexel, I'm not anymore on the dog. And we have to give them all the respect that they deserve. And I wanted to send a shout out to my man, Brian. Okay. Let's go over here to Chris. You know, they said Drexel couldn't be here and couldn't hang with these guys, but the score doesn't lie. I'm a firm believer in uh, third time's a charm. And let's take on the big five. That's it. These guys are ready for a victory. We'll send it back to you. Lou. All right, Lou Tilly here. Dick, tell them to watch on their big screen, the big board now, because here come their guys after one half of the big upset, and this would be the big one nationally, causing a ripple effect all through the tournament. Drexel and Bill Hurrian over, uh, by now, by 10 points at the half, hitting the long ball, Malik Rose banging the boards. Memphis, a powerfully rated team in this thing, down 10, 40 to 30 at the half. We'll be going right back to this game right after this. Wildcats of Villanova, they're up tomorrow trying to get past their first round of the this year. It's Portland, the game in Milwaukee. Yuki Washington's there. He'll be live after the UCLA-Princeton game. All the games right here on KYW3 all night long. Now, other news today, and we're watching this one tonight. There's a story around town about the sale of the Sixers. Now, I tracked down a source familiar with their financial side, and I found this out this afternoon. The story goes that they are talking with a major local telecommunications company about a possible sale of the Sixers. But it would be the first step in a second deal that would then include the Flyers and the Spectrum facilities. 
More tonight. Now, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, the Denver Nuggets star who was suspended for not standing during the playing of the national anthem, has changed his mind. Rauf, a devout Muslim, says that he will now stand during the playing of the national anthem. Originally said it was against his faith to honor the flag, calling it a symbol of oppression and tyranny. The NBA has lifted the suspension and Rauf will play tomorrow night against Chicago. Another note, the Eagles have signed quarterback Rodney Pete, brought him back for a two-year deal, reportedly worth about a million per. That's the sports. We'll see you later tonight, Larry. Okay, we'll see you then. Up next, Dave Rogers with the weather. And he's going to tell us how long our spring fever will last with the exclusive Franklin Institute forecast next. I've driven this road hundreds of times, but I never really noticed it until about six weeks ago, around the time I started using Ginsana. Ginsana is a natural supplement. My daughter gave me a box, said it helps my body use oxygen better. It makes the most of my natural energy. All I know is I feel better, more alive. Ginsana opened my eyes to a more energetic me and to all this. Feel your Ginsana, the original all-natural energizer. A message of somewhat importance from Celebrity Cruises. Somewhere right now, a garbage truck is waking up an entire neighborhood. Somewhere, an elephant has escaped from the zoo. Somewhere, a kid is practicing the tuba. And somewhere, a cold front is moving in. Not here, though. No, not here. Celebrity Cruises, voted top ten by the readers of Condé Nast Traveler five years in a row. Allow us to exceed your expectations. Great vacation. Fashions, brand names, brand new. Think Clover Day. Think sharp, bright. Save at the last Clover Day before Easter. Think strawberries and clove your first Clover Day. March Clover Day is on now. Welcome to the Buick dealer website. I need something sporty. <laughs> Honey but comfortable this is regal 205 horsepower that's more than Taurus. okay how much whoa that's less than Taurus. wait a minute what's this a lease just 249 i'm out of here you got to love this weather. Absolutely. <laughs> I think incredible. everybody loves this weather. The big question is, how long is it going to last, David Rogers? Well, unfortunately, we do have some changes to talk about. 63 for starters was our afternoon high. Currently have a temperature of 61 degrees. Kind of the last hurrah for that nice area of high pressure. They've been bringing us some of the great conditions we've been experiencing so far this week. Here's what's going to cause some of the changes. A slow-moving cold front with a low-pressure center that will not only bring rain to the area, but even the possibility of some thunderstorms followed by cooler temperatures. Let's take a look into the future with your five-day planner and detail the forecast. Again, for Friday, take along an umbrella. Rain, maybe some thunderstorms later in the afternoon. Temperatures getting up to about 60 degrees. Cooling off a bit for Saturday, but pretty normal for this time of the year. 52 degrees, your high. Increasing clouds, cool temperatures on Sunday. And as you head back to work and school on Monday, lots of showers and temperatures are cool 40 degrees. We'll have a complete forecast coming up tonight after the big game. Steph, Lair? Thank you. And that is News 3 at halftime. I'm Stephanie Stahl. Thanks and, so much for being with us. And I'm Larry Kane. Join us again tonight after basketball for a late edition of News 3 at 11. And just a reminder, we'll be on early tomorrow morning. News 3 this morning will begin at 5 a.m. with the latest on the situation on I-95. And in between then and all through the night, don't forget KYW News Radio 1060, the station that never sleeps. For all of us here at KYW and Channel 3, have a great night. Good night. the year. Leading score, Rose, 12 and 8, as I mentioned, and Lorenz and Wright, who really needs some help. But the thing that impresses me most about Malik, although he gives up some height to Lorenz and Wright, about four inches, is he's able to lock Wright up on the block.
and still get his shot up. He's doing a great job defensively coming up with the ball and keeping right from turning where he wants to go. But it's going to be important if Drexel wants to keep control of this game to continue taking and making the outside shot. They're playing with an awful lot of confidence in this game. The Rockets can't hit. But again, board control. Rose control. Rose control. Look at that. Great hands. Finally, the loose ball comes down to Memphis into the arms of Mingo Johnson. Now, if the Tigers are going to get back in this game, they have to do it defensively. Their style is to play with a lot of havoc and a lot of emotion on the defensive end. They haven't been in any kind of a rhythm here on the defensive end. Right, a leaner. Turned into a tough shot. And then the reach-in foul after Qatar was able to come down with it. This is just great hustle by Malik Rose. He's trying to operate down inside. Wright's going to get a piece of this ball initially, but he doesn't give up. He continues to battle, battle. He puts it up two, three, four times. He misses a shot, but you have to like the fact that he is not afraid at all to take the ball to the basket. Yeah, you watch that replay, and I think about our friend in the studio, Clark Kellogg. He called him a stat sheet stuffer. <laughs> well, that's an offensive foul against Myers on the penetration, but... Uh, this is another one of those hustle plays you said Coach Bill Herrian would not be upset about because he's trying to make something happen. And Jeff J. Myers, as his teammates call him, is just trying to get inside with a little dribble penetration, a little shake and move, and try to get the ball up on the glass. Mingo Johnson taking that player control hit. Junior out of Nashville at Overton High School needs to get it done. Neither team able to scratch here in the opening moments. Henderson off the back iron. Michael Wilson. Yep, Michael Wilson up and over the back as Drexel establishes position. That's the second foul against Wilson. We're seeing some early frustration here in the second half by the Tigers. Lorenzo Wright in his first possession tried to force a shot up and didn't get it, and he fouled after the possession. So this is early frustration for the Tigers. They cannot panic if they want to get back in this game. Darakis. Rockus now giving his team a 13-point lead. Just a freshman. He was a North Atlantic Conference player, uh, rookie of the year. Oh, it was a clean sweep. You have the player of the year, the rookie of the year, coach of coach the year. Of the year. <laughs> Johnson. Wilson, that's a good look. And they finally get the reach-in foul with Wright controlling it. Chuck Guitar picking it up. We are at the pit in Albuquerque, New Mexico, side of the first round of the Western Regional, where Purdue is the top seed. Syracuse already a winner, the fourth seed, past Montana State. They await the winner of this game. Georgia and Clemson, the 8-9 game, coming up later tonight. We got a couple of pretty exciting games coming up this evening, especially that Clemson-Georgia game. Big rivalry in football. We'll be in basketball tonight. No contact there between Henderson and Myers, but a no call. Fry. David Fry has hit his only two field goal tries. Larry Fence needs to talk it over. And the underdog getting a little support from the faithful here in Albuquerque. The Memphis drought has now lasted eight minutes. Chevy Blazer. Sport utility vehicle with the driver control system. It's nice to know it's there. There's a place in New York owned by the biggest sports stars around. You know, I like to move long hair. And you never know sure. when they'll show up. Long. Sure. It's the official All Star Cafe. Ken Griffey Jr. 301 lifetime average. Where the owners are always willing to help out. Excuse me, it's 302. So if you go, bring the right stats and the right card. Visa, because the All-Star doesn't take 
American Express. 301 lifetime average. They say it's everywhere you want to be. Imagine a satellite system that turned digital signals into vivid pictures and CD quality sound. What would it look like? How big would it be? Oh, about 18 inches. The RCA Digital Satellite System. Customized programming and the power of digital technology. Now in a convenient take-home size. See the new RCA brand DSS system and save up to $100 by mail on select RCA products. They give a deal to everyone? I thought I was special, baby! Introducing the Michelin X1 with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty. It gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus control in any driving condition. After all, it hasn't rained that much in years. Face it, no other razor shaves closer. Or with more comfort than Gillette Sensor XL. No razor is better. An innocent man accused of murder faces a town without pity. Would shoot an unarmed man, would you? No, I wouldn't. I'd sure beat the hell out of you. Walker Saturday. Who's next? Drexel has come back to second half with the same aggressive play and unselfish play, especially inside with Malik Rose. Gets the ball down on the block, waits for the defense and pitches it out, and David Fry is looking for that outside shot. The Dragons led 33-30 with five and a half remaining in the half. Since then, they've run off 13 unanswered and have blown this one out to a 16-point cushion. Along with Derek Dickey, Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. And Lorenzen Wright is rejected. Nothing coming easily inside for Memphis. They do get the foul this time on the reach. You have to be impressed with what Malik Rose is doing on the offensive end. But how about some defensive effort? He steps back from right, and he actually gets a piece of this ball to keep the ball in play. Excellent job on both ends of the floor. David Fry got the foul, his first. And you really begin to see the panic button with Memphis got to push, got to foul on Chris Garner. They're, do you see what I see? Oh, there's panic right now in the Tigers' eyes because they're missing some shots, they're showing some frustration, and they don't know how to get back in this game. Defense is what has won 21 games for the Tigers all year, and they've gotten out of sync because Drexel is not backing down. <laughs> Top seeds were able to advance today. There's Rose. Well, he gets it in there, and it's just lights out. It's money in the bank because they're spreading the floor out. The Dragons are making good decisions about passing the ball, spreading the floor, and allowing Rose the opportunity to be able to work on the block. And you see Fry giving some help trying to front Lorenzen Wright and another foul spotted against him. Malik Rose shoots 59% on the season. Why? Why? Because he's able to get the ball inside and his teammates give him enough room so he's got one defender around him. If he's got to, he can split that defense or pitch it back out and get support, support on the perimeter. That's a walk. Newsom. And give a lot of credit to Bill Harriam because his defense has sloughed off the non-scores. They have concentrated on the scores for Larry Finch. They haven't gotten a field goal combined with the end of the first half and the opening moments of the second in over nine minutes. Well, if you ask Bill Harrion, this is not a surprise for him. He said all he wants his team to do is work hard to try to put the ball in the basket. Defensively, he knows the guys are going to work hard. They're going to get the job done. Newman slapped that one away. 17 left on the shot clock as Drexel triggers it in. Myers to do the honor, a 15-0 run. And Memphis has failed to score in this half, as they did in the last five minutes of the first. Overby. Finally, Memphis corrals it. Gales getting it off the deck. And with the reach-in fouls beginning to mount for David Fry, who's been a, a trump card player coming off the bench to help Bill Harrion's team offensively. Well, he averages about 10 minutes a game, and he comes in and he does. He gives some good production. He only averages two points a game, but any production he can give in a game like this is going to be a plus. Lorenzen Wright finally scratches for the Tigers. 
48-32. Tigers needed to stop that bleeding somehow. They need a basket, but they need defense. That's what's going to get them back in. They need some steals and some tip-aways and try to get something emotionally so they can get their crowd in this game. That basket ended a near 10-minute drought for Memphis. And a foul spotted on that reach-in. see George Hudgens coming into the game for the first time as uh, sitting down is David Fry who picked up that third foul a moment ago. He and 55 Chuck Qatar getting a rest. Darakis finds Myers. Nice move. There was some contact. No call. And the loose ball gathered in by Gales. Gales has hit a pair of threes today. Takes his game inside. But again, a rush. Hobson is in the game for the first time. Cody Hobson, the junior, out of Oklahoma for Memphis. The Dragons are attacking the ball. Anytime it's loose, whether it's on the board, whether it's on the floor, they are coming up with the ball. They're winning the hustle game against the Tigers. Bill Harrion said it best. He told his team, hey, look, we're not going to do any better than a 12th seed. We got as much of a break from the tournament selection committee as we could. Let's take advantage of it. Shot clock at five and a steal by Garner. Garner with his first basket, and he gets it with a steal. Well, with the speed, you know that Chris Garner can get out in front and, and make a layup like that. And the turnover coming off pressure that Memphis can only get with a made basket, something they went without nearly 10 minutes in this game. 22nd timeout taken by Drexel, and the lead is 14 for the Dragons. Well, we talked about defense and what the Tigers have to do. Their style, their forte, is coming up with steals, playing the passing lane, and turning those, making those turnovers into points. If they can continue aggressively on the defensive end, they can chip away at this lead. They're not going to outscore Drexel. They have to do it one basket at a time. Today's game is being produced by Roy Hamilton and directed by Steve Milton. Steve is in for Joe Assetti, who had planned to be here. We'd like to take this moment to give our best to Joe. He was to direct the games here in Albuquerque, but due to illness, could not make it. Joe, we know you're watching. We wish you all the best. And it has certainly been entertaining here in this second game of the West Regional First Round. Drexel with a 14-point lead. The underdog and 12th seed champions of the North Atlantic Conference with the second longest winning streak among Division I schools coming into the tournament. Right, that's his spot. Can't get it to fall. What an athletic move by Hobson. I'd say Hobson's got hops. Oh, no question about it. it. Looked like Michael Wilson in there, but he was over the entire crowd to be able to tip that in at six foot five. So Memphis back to within 12. Six straight points for them. Overby. Oh, that's a great yeah. Bill Harrion is up along with his team over there. They are really pleased with the ability to be able to get some triple, triple penetration and find the scorer, find the horse down on the block. Garner. Now that shot's been there, and it's up to Garner to nail a few. He's got to look for it, though. If he doesn't look for it, the defense is just going to continue to collapse around Wright and Cedric Henderson, and they can't even turn. Carter out of Trentwell High School, same school that produced Elliott Perry and Penny Hardaway. Myers. Larry Rose spots the foul. This is a guy that's about five deep into the Memphis bench. Well, you see the ball going up by Lorenzen Wright, but Cody Hobson comes in, and he is head and shoulders above the crowd to be able to tip that ball down in the basket. And just a very gifted athletic play. And coming in, he'd only played in 14 games, a total of eight points all season. Jay Myers at the line for Drexel. Given name is Jeff. They call him Jay. He goes by that. That's just his first free throw made today. He had missed his first three. The 
52-39. Drexel by 13. Led by 10 at halftime. Jeff Myers at 6'2 is a very strong rebounder. He averages six rebounds a game along with his 19 points. Guitar trying to overplay against Wright, keeping from getting it down low. Memphis has to be able to dribble the ball inside. Someone has to get, find a seam and take the defense. Not there for Newman. Rose on the glass. He has been an eliminator. Myers for three. Newman the rebound. Watch Garner here. Too quick. Right. Bumped by Rose. Wave off the hoop. Malik got him with the ball on the floor. The Drexel Dragons of the North Atlantic Conference being heard from today. You can always make uh, numbers, Timmy, sound any way you want. And, and if Drexel out-rebounded their opponents on the season, they're 17-1. and one. If they lead at halftime, 20-2. and two. And If they hold their opponent under 70 points, they're 15-0. and Garakas. That's deflected by Gales, an outstanding One official play. Has, a, has a foul. Yep. Donnie Gray and Rick Wolko. Wolko had the foul, and that will be the call. Drexel again playing the passing lane. They're coming up with a steal. Looked like a clean block from our first angle, but official coming in from the opposite side of the floor says it's a foul. Going to send him to the free throw line. Garakas at the stripe. Very important cog to this team as a freshman. And both teams, because of the style of play on the defensive end, have been in the bonus and gotten there very early in both halves. Memphis, a part of a foul fest early in the first 10 minutes. You know, it was at that time when, when Memphis began to uh, get fatigued, when Michael Wilson had to go to the bench, that the tempo control of this game clearly went to Drexel. No question, and, and you get physically fatigued, but you also get mentally exhausted, and I don't know if the Tigers have been able to recover from that. Drexel's gone back into his zone. They're going to force the Tigers to shoot outside, and the way that Drexel's been rebounding the ball, this is a good plan. Hobson. Hobson coming off the bench has been a factor with a putback and now with a face-up basket it's 54 to 41 Larry Finch is just trying to find somebody who can get it done Myers leading it for Garakas last touch by Memphis 11 28 remaining back to Albuquerque in a moment right this second someone needs a ride with a Motorola pager, you know. Now. Thanks for picking us up, Mom. Don't hug me. You're wet. Mommy. Okay, you got the pager number, right? Right this second, it's just the two of you. We're, We're going, going out. out. But if the baby needs you, you know. Now. Well, no page, no problem. Let's have dessert. There was a time when we didn't have a worry in the world. Today, well, we seem to be making up for it. That's why you need Chevy Lumina, a car you can trust. A car so well-engineered and affordable, you could have it paid off long before it needs its first tune-up. Chevy Lumina. Because someday you'll realize nobody's got enough money, and everybody's got enough worries. Sitco, our super premium gasoline will give you the high performance you demand. So prepare yourself to be totally blown away. Super premium performance. Sitco says go. Just make sure you stay in the chariot, Chuck. I guarantee you're going to win the dang race. <laughs> That's good. True story. Oh, yeah. You are so special. That chariot thing you did and the water stuff. I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light. Frankly, son, you frighten me. 
For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And it's more like, I love you, man. <laughs> See? A child from an angel's past becomes a disciple of evil. I'm not the devil, she is. Can Paul Winfield help her win back his soul? Touched by an angel, Saturday. 54-41, CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship rolls on. Here are the games coming up later tonight. Arkansas, Penn State, Virginia Commonwealth, and Mississippi State. That's a quality matchup. Western Carolina taking on Purdue. Already today, Eastern Michigan a winner. Syracuse, a winner over Montana State in our opening game here at the West Regional in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tim Brando along with Derek Dickey. Memphis State with a 10-minute drought to close the first half and open the second half, allowing the Dragons of the North Atlantic Conference an opportunity for a double-digit lead as we're almost to the halfway mark of the second half. And it seems like Drexel is in complete control of this game by their aggressive play and not allowing Memphis to get second or third shots. Memphis, of course, formerly known as Memphis State, became the U of M a few years ago. And they should be Memphis. Most of their players hail from that area. Ball is on the deck. Finally, Gales tied up with the possession arrow to the Tigers. You think back to those great teams that Memphis had in the mid-80s. Finally, they made it to the Final Four, but they were a threat for it for some time and the foundation for Larry Finch in the 90s with this young talent, explosive to be sure. This could be the foundation of a lot of future trips to the NCAA tournament. It's amazing the, the wealth of talent that he gets from the Memphis area right in his backyard, and he is really concerned about Lorenzo Wright. I guess a lot of people are talking to him about NBA career. He wants to know, is, is he going to stay or is he going to go? Foul spotted underneath. Double zero. Malik Rose. Malik Rose picking it up. They go the other way. His second. Rins and Wright picked up that foul. So Rose to shoot on the other end. Look at that. 16 assists on 19 field goals. That's ball distribution. Oh, it's very impressive, and it's also what everybody describes as unselfish play on the season. Drexel scores about 84 points a game, but they average 17 assists, which means that everybody gets a chance to touch the ball, and you get good looks at the basket. Wilson coming back into the game. Hobson certainly gave some very good minutes to the Memphis cause. Larry Finch, along with Tom Schubert, one of his assistants there to congratulate him to help get this Memphis team within shouting distance of Drexel. But they are trailing by 15 with 10 and a half remaining. But Tim, you mentioned how important it is for Mingo Johnson and Chris Garner to be a part of the defense and the offense if the Tigers have any chance at all. They just can't seem to get anything going on the perimeter. The Rock is checking Johnson now. Garner on the way. The follow. And again, I think you have to credit Bill Harrion's defense because he's forced non-shooters to take shots for the Tigers. That's the sign of a good defensive coach in my mind. You try to put the ball in the hands of guys who are not accustomed to handling it and making decisions. Rockus gives it up to Rose. He gets it back for three. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Great inside outside action. Mike Dorakis is 11th in the nation with 48% from the field behind the three-point arc. Excellent inside-outside play. Henderson slashing to the hoop. Bodies on the deck and Wright getting the slam. Malik Rose. 14 and Rose is on the deck holding his ankle. Not good. Well, very quickly, you saw a guitar over there. He's all right. He's all right. Uh, well, the coaching staff is holding their breath over there on the bench of Drexel. In our first game today, Lazarus Sims pulled up lane in the second half. Syracuse is confident that they will have him, but regardless of which team they face on Saturday, 
a healthy Lazar Sims mm. is going to be critical against either Drexel or Memphis. Uh, strictly because of the athleticism that the guards are displaying out here. Drexel is doing a terrific job, and Memphis, we know that they have good athletes at their guard positions, but they're just not getting the job done this, this afternoon. Cornelius Overby on the floor with Myers. Darakis in the middle of the league row, staying in the game with the bad ankle. 55 Chuck Guitar. Turnover by Memphis. Memphis on the other end, right to Wilson. Hello. Well, Drexel turns it over, and the Tigers can take advantage. And they can score in waves. Yes, they can. They score in bunches. And if the Tigers play their aggressive style of defense, come up with those steals, they all they have to do is push the ball up the court. This is what Memphis needs to do. Get in the passing lane. Be aggressive. Come up with the ball. You see Cedric Henderson at six foot seven leading the break. One pass and another touch pass. And Michael Wilson can finish that play along with guys like Lorenzen Wright and Cedric Henderson. On that play, and you noticed it as well as I did, he almost double dribbled. He very yes, he nearly did. got that left hand on. It was very smart to give a touch pass. He almost traveled and he also almost charged on that same play, but it was a good decision to give it up because if you catch Michael Wilson running to the basket, he can jump over anybody in a crowd. Overby at the strike. Senior out of the Bronx, New York. He has been uh, in and out of the doghouse a time or two through his career. One of those players that gives you a lot of energy, enthusiasm, <laughs> but Bill Harry and a few headaches along the way. Just a few. He said that's his, uh, uh, his words are his problem, child, and that he'll make some decisions sometimes not the highlight reel. <laughs> Ooh, uh, and we should mention that he meant that in a lovingly... Uh, yes, oh, absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. Over me! Stop the ball, somebody! Drexel is going to control this game if they can continue to get plays like that. Johnson giving a little show time and right there to follow. 63 to 51. You can see that Rose is laboring on that ankle. I mean, he really is a he sort is of a hurting. Yes, skip he and is. a jump each time. Yes, he is. Memphis likes to throw the ball up to the basket. They have several players. They almost have a choice, but if you were able to get the ball up and find someone, make good eye contact, this time Cedric Henderson happened to be the recipient of that pass, but the Tigers need to spread the floor out a little bit more. They've gotten too congested early. Rose leaving the game. And this is a critical stage for Drexel trying to hang on. The thing they've managed to do is get to the free throw line. They've made their last nine at the strike. And as they retake that ankle, Rose gets a rest, but it's not the kind of, of substitution that Bill Harrion would like to make. It's damage control. He's just trying to hang now until the next timeout, which he gets now, and that is a break. 7.57 remaining. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. Yes! I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. Chevy's got the highest resale value of any full-size pickup. Well, I go around. Of course. To find that out, you'd have to sell it. Note the back position. Oh, what a tragedy! Okay, I'm sending the contract to the office right now. 
A task like transmitting documents to the electronic world can be an easy thing for a network to do. Assuming, of course, the network was designed for transmitting documents. Contract? I don't have any contract. They're everywhere. King Cobra Oversize, Golf's number one selling irons. First, Goodyear revolutionized wet traction design with AquaTread. Now, Goodyear introduces the only tire with a lifetime tread life warranty, the new all-season InfiniTread. Its tread is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Sixty-five, fifty-one, seven, fifty-seven remaining. Twelfth-seeded Drexel trying to pull the upset of fifth-seeded Memphis. Our game summary at Malik Rose now with an ankle injury and out of the game. Eighteen points and twelve rebounds. Three-point shooting clearly with Drexel today, and they're living at the line. Look at that, fourteen of eighteen, and their last ten in a row. And the Tigers only two attempts in this game. That tells me they are not being aggressive in getting inside and trying to draw some contact. They have to get to that free throw line. Johnson can't hit. George Hudgens coming up with that rebound. Malik Rose is on the sideline and the decision's already been made to send him back in the game on the season. He's only averaging 31 minutes a game, but you have to be able to put him back in and keep the momentum. Guitar had that ball deflected, and then Memphis on the receiving end of that foul as Malik Rose comes back into the game. Hudgens picking up the personal, his first. I thought that was a fine bit of coaching by Bill Harrion to get him out when they did, understanding that the TV timeout was coming up on the next dead ball, and his team had already hit nine consecutive free throws. Why not get him out then? Uh, and a great job also to be able to let the trainer evaluate him, wrap him up a little bit tighter, and then give him a bit of a blow because he's been playing at a very high level of intensity, and now he can come back a little bit fresher. Let's take a look at how he responds coming up and down the court the next few times. Gales at the free throw line, and... The comeback becomes much more difficult if you struggle at the free throw line, and as Derek documented, that has been a problem for Memphis all season. They have to get there, but they also need to make 75-80% and be aggressive, take the ball to the basket. The, the Tiger guards are struggling from the perimeter. Why not put it on the floor? Darakis leaving it up in the air, Overby trying an athletic follow that would not fall. Overby needed to come up with that possession and bring it back out. You've got time on the clock. You have a lead. You're in control of this game. No need to put it back up that quickly. Mingo with the dump down to Lorenzen Wright. Good recognition to Garner. Wright gets it back. Can't get it to fall. One shot and out for the Tigers. This is a Memphis team that out of Conference USA, considered to be one of the real upstart conferences in the country, lost at home at the Pyramid to Marquette. And Drexel has done to Memphis what Marquette was able to do. Mike Dean had Memphis's number throughout the course of the season. Control the tempo of the game. Do not let the Tigers get into their up and down running style, creating a lot of havoc on the defensive end. Rose, tougher for him to make that move, that's obvious but still agile enough to get it and draw the foul. And a very smart move. You want to get the ball inside. Malik Rose out of the game for a couple of minutes. Get the ball back in his hands. At least let him touch it. He is unselfish enough that if the defense collapses, he will pitch it back out. He felt like he had an advantage. Now he goes through the free throw line. Garner getting the foul, his fourth. Between Garner and Mingo Johnson, the backcourt for Memphis, they are a collective three of 16 from the floor. Obviously, if you're not hitting from the perimeter, your defense can sag and collapse, and Bill Harrigan's team has done that. They've done a terrific job. And how about Malik Rose? He also student teaches at Greenfield Elementary School. He's a student teacher of math for the fifth grade there. Gets one of the two. And as he backs up defensively, he continues to favor that right ankle. I think he will, and tomorrow it'll probably be swollen, but if they win the game, he won't even feel it. Henderson, he walks. 
A little bunny hop that you can't get away with at this level. And the Memphis Blues roll on. We mentioned at the top, a fifth seed has been eliminated at least in the last seven years each season. And they lost to DePaul back in 89. They were part of that stat. Dubious though it may be. Tigers need to turn up their defensive intensity. They need to start overplaying a little bit more. Rose. No, no call that time. Bill Harrigan wanted it. Now Mingo Johnson. You have to take a few. Finally, he gets one to go. Points off of turnovers. A good job by Memphis to be able to come up with a control break and a very important time for Mingo Johnson to be able to find his shot. One for five from beyond the arc for Mingo. Overby. Offense. He pushed off. He didn't call it. Floor is balanced to Memphis's favor. Mingo trying to go crossover. Myers picks him. And the foul against Johnson. Sometime there is a respect or lack thereof if you don't know the opponent. Well, if you're going to cross over, at least keep the ball close to your body and try to maintain control of the ball. Mingo Johnson got the ball too far out in front of him and lost the handle on it. And Lorenzen Wright picked up his fourth foul. And if uh, Lorenzen fouls out, that should just about do it for Memphis. Well, the Tigers will be in trouble, and Larry Finch will have to go to his bench and get some more production from guys who haven't played very much for him this season. Larry Finch, uh, when you're a coach and uh, a resident of a city as big as Memphis, about a million strong, and you played and you were an assistant there, at some point in time, it's the kind of city that gravitates to that school. You are the school. And in many respects, uh, he gets the attention of a pro franchise. And sometimes you draw far more criticism than you deserve at the collegiate level, if that's the case. He's gotten his share through his 10 seasons as a head coach. Good or bad, and mostly it's been negative criticism for Larry Finch. And he has done an outstanding job of building a program for the Tigers at Memphis University. And he's continuing to get good athletes. And he's also graduated his student athletes which I think to me is more important a nicer guy that you wouldn't meet mm. Gales gets to the line off that foul against Overby and John Gales knocks it down great teams in the 80s and he went out and recruited a lot of that talent everyone remembers Keith Lee and Bedford but Doom Haynes and Bobby Parks <laughs> some really athletically gifted players that helped build the foundation of this Memphis program. You were there for some of those early sure watches. I sure was. Myers in the open floor, taking a little uh, time to use up clock. Memphis not fouling as yet, but trying to rag them as much as they can in the defensive end. Doing a good job being aggressive, which is what they need to do. Force Drexel to handle the ball out away from the basket. Don't let Rose dominate in the paint. Well, Rose really wants it and did not get it until very late. But he didn't make it count. He did make it count. But did he demand the ball? He wanted the ball, and he wanted the ball because, yes, he knew the shot clock was going down, but he realized he could make something happen. Gales, a leaner. John Gales, 10 points in the game for him. Only averages 2.5 per game. Gales hit a couple of shots early in that first half, and now he's looking a little bit more to be aggressive offensively. 70 to 58. 12th seeded Drexel with three and a half and counting, trying to pull the upset here in the opening round over fifth seeded Memphis out of Conference USA. Crisp ball movement in every half-court half sequence for Drexel, although this time they turn it over, they did manage to use clock. That's exactly what they want to do. Bill Harian wants his team to try to utilize some clock and then also try to be able to score. If you don't get anything, come away with free throws, guys. At least get to the line. Malik Rose, 21 points, 14 rebounds. And now Mingo Johnson does pick up the foul against Cornelius Overby. 
Malik Rose is a player. He's, he's one of the co-captains for this Dragons team, and he's saying, guys, I want the ball. At least if you don't, if you give it to me, the defense now has to respect that. Give me the ball. I can make something happen. Even with a bad leg, if the defense comes, I'll give it back to you. 6'7 seven and 250. And he looks shorter than that, doesn't he? He, he looks does. More like 6'5 and a half, 6'6. Six, six. Whatever he's got, he knows how to use it, Ooh. and that's the bottom line. And, and so many times we'll criticize players for not being whatever height they're listed or whatever weight they're listed. You have to know how to use what you have, and if you're able to do that, that's how players become better and better, and the so-called good players become the superstars that we always talk about. 2.53 remaining. Philadelphia Freedom up 14. It's well known that Cellular One offers remarkably clear service from coast to coast. Her father couldn't be here, so he's listening over the phone. Oh, she sounds great, honey. In fact, clarity could be why more people choose Cellular One. I pass the ball over to Tommy. He scored! Yes! Cellular One, the nation's number one cellular service, clear across America. Primitive investors were always stalking the bull, fearing the bear, chasing the fast buck. Slowly, some investors came to understand seasons and cycles. They worked to build wealth and preserve it, to thrive, and others fought to survive. Are you counting on making a killing? Or have you evolved into a more civilized investor? Ask your financial advisor about Kemper Funds to start building tomorrow's today. Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. When I punch the clock, I'm a working machine. I got boots to do the job, got my Wolverines. I can take a wild jackhammer, three by miles of interstate. I can work like hell, never get the blues. Cause I feel like heaven in my Wolverine boots. Wolverine door shots, guaranteed comfort for your money back. Work like hell, feel like heaven. Wolverine Georgia, made in the USA. Tonight... Are you ready? Dave welcomes Sandra Bullock, plus... Brand new special effects. Yeah! <laughs> the noise is being made by Drexel. They lead by 14, 2.53 to play, along with Derek Dickey, Tim Brando. They say in this tournament, he who just bests wins in the first round. And Memphis has been unable to make the necessary adjustments. Yeah, only because Drexel has been in their shirts every opportunity and done a great job defensively controlling the flow of this game and also got to the free throw line. They're 19 out of 24 from the line, whereas the Memphis Tigers are only 3 out of 5 from the free throw line. Connor, not there. He's only hit one today in six tries. Wilson misses a chip, chip, chippy, and Hobson gets fouled underneath. Malik Rose gets the foul. The intensity still there with a 14-point lead. As you see, our game reset. Memphis has a pair of timeouts they can utilize, plus a 20. The possession arrow to Drexel. Memphis over the limit, which is horrible news for them, given what Drexel has been able to accomplish at the free throw line. Well, those numbers tell me that Drexel's in control of this game. <laughs> and the score certainly indicates that. And the Tigers are shooting only 62% from the free throw line on the season. I don't know if it's going to do them very much good to get to the line. They have to find ways of stopping the clock now, and fouling is about the only way if they expect to have a chance. There's a steal by Wright. Quicker hands against Malik Rose. That hasn't happened often today. Go for the steal first, then put the ball in the basket. Wilson, outstanding elevation with that jumper. Ten in the game for Michael Wilson, a senior from Melrose High School. At some point, 
Memphis has to start fouling. At this stage, they choose to just play with the shot clock on the defensive end. Unless they can find another way of stopping the clock, they're down by 11 points. That's at least four possessions. Drexel content to utilize the clock. Myers. Oh, man, the dagger. Four three-pointers for Jay Myers today. The officials are conversing. What could this be about? Two points. They're saying he was on the line? Yep. It was a two-point shot rather than a three. Hey, Timmy, that's still a dagger. Well, in indeed, because Memphis chooses to play tough defense, not give up the foul. They lose 20 seconds plus give up a deuce. That, that, and that does not compute. You have to stop the clock, and you need to score points, and you have to do it now. Wilson on the glass. Wilson's trajectory was down. That's how much elevation he has, but Memphis is shooting into the first half and opening of the second half was abysmal and it led to a 15 nothing run for Drexel that is the difference in today's game the Dragons are for real they came in here with a 26 and 3 record Myers breaking down Hobson lost it on the way up under a minute remaining 12th seeded Drexel. They've been here before, but they've not been able to make good use of the opportunity. Bill Harrion challenged his team, and they have responded this afternoon. Look at that excitement. The genuine Chevrolet players of the game, Malik Rose from Drexel, Lorenzen Wright of Memphis, Rose did it all. And in celebrating, its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And learned by a young team with a tremendous future but the moment belonging to a team that felt that now they deserved being in the NCAA tournament they were happy to get there in prior seasons but this year is a 12th seed Drexel said you know what it's time for us to step out of the shadow of the big five and Bill Harry and mentioned that to his team they also have Two writers from Philadelphia. That's the first time in a long while they've had a beat writer and a columnist <laughs> follow them into the NCAA tournament. And Bill Harrion's team getting it done in a very, very fashionable way. You have to understand why the writers are here and why the national media is going to be following Drexel. This team is legitimate. Coming in here having won 22 out of their last 23 games. Quick steal by Smith of Memphis. And Henderson gets the reverse slam. Larry Finch's son is into the game for the first time. Number 21 in gray. He unretired his own number to allow his son the opportunity to play for him. High lob picked off by Henderson. And here's Larry Finch, Jr. Drexel, the winner. They are 12th seed with a bullet and advance to the second round of the NCAA West Regional. Their first ever NCAA tournament win. It belongs to the Dragons, champions of the North Atlantic Conference. Our final score, the Drexel Dragons 75, the Memphis Tigers 63. As you look at the brackets, it will be the Dragons taking on Syracuse in round two. So for Derek Dickey, Tim Brando saying so long from the pit where Drexel wins by 12. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship.